From the Oklahoma newsroom, it's a signing day update. Oklahoma State now our focus in this uh, upcoming 10 o'clock hour. And Kyle Fredrickson, our Oklahoma State beat writer, joins us on the phone. Kyle, it uh, appears that OSU has everyone in. No real surprises uh, today. They weren't really targeting anybody that was a last-minute decision. Uh, what's your overall thought about this signing day for the Cowboys in this class that they have coming in? Yeah, thankfully the, the, the most drama it seems that they have on, on signing day today is the fact that Mike Gundy showed up to his press conference without a mullet. That was, uh, I think that was the biggest decommitment we've seen from anyone uh, <laughs> right now for, with, with this class in, in terms of hairstyle. But no, this has been a day uh, that I think OSU has, has looked forward to. Uh, Mike Gundy's talked recently uh, about how with the continuity of this staff, bringing the same recruiters back for a consecutive season, something they hadn't done in a long, long time, uh, that allowed them to really recruit some players that they got in on as juniors, uh, continuing that relationship through two full recruiting cycles and all culminating into today. So uh, in terms of the rankings of, of what these guys are individually and then collectively uh, with some of these recruiting services, um, it's going to be a class that's going to finish probably in the mid-30s nationally by most of those, those recruiting services. Uh, but, you know, as Gundy has said over these, you know, now 13 seasons that he's had where, where he's brought these players in, um, they're not overly concerned with necessarily what these guys are ranked individually, uh, just more impressed by what they're able to do athletically. Uh, a lot of them playing multiple sports, um, a lot of them, you know, being under-recruited stars at, at their schools and in a lot of these Texas areas. So uh, for, for Gundy and, and the Cowboys, I know this is a day they've been looking forward to and, and they've uh, built some some what looks like some good depth moving forward. Yeah, just to clarify, by the way, Mike Gundy said he cut about three inches off the mullet, so I think he may still technically have the mullet, but it's definitely shortened down from what we saw it, uh, at the end of last season. He was a little worried about going into homes for home visits during the recruiting push here with, uh, with it looking a little, uh, a little bit scraggly. So uh, Mike Gundy has cut the mullet back just a hair, no pun intended. All right, Kyle, one of the <laughs> more juicy items that came out of Mike Gundy's press conference and talking about this signing class is that they have one scholarship left. Any idea where they might look to try to use that scholarship? Yeah, it's, it's interesting that he says that today because it's, it's sort of uh, an all-call to, I think, players, uh, mostly I would guess in-state players who are sort of waiting for a scholarship offer, maybe things fell through, maybe last-minute you know minute decisions had to be made, and, and, and now they're looking for a new opportunity. Uh, for Gundy to announce that today, we've got one more left. And in terms of the needs of, of OSU and what this class brings already, I would certainly think that OSU is going to take a long, hard look at who they might be able to get um, as an offensive lineman with that scholarship. Uh, you know, through the course of this class, OSU's had three different high school guys commit and then decommit, uh, two of them going to Texas A&M and the other going to Texas, um, leaving OSU with a bit of a hole in terms of its long-term development on the offensive line. They pick up a JUCO guy in this class. Uh, they pick up uh, in Arlington Hambright. Uh, they pick up the Minnesota center transfer and Tyler Moore, uh, who's going to sit out a year before he gets to play. So they like the pieces that they've added, uh, but in terms of developing it for, you know, down the line at 2019 and 2020, uh, you know, that's where they're really looking ahead. Uh, I think it may be filling that last spot. Yeah, definitely something we'll keep an eye on to see who might fill that last scholarship spot, some, some local guys uh, that, that could fall into that. So we'll continue to follow that in the coming days and weeks. Uh, but Kyle, you talk about offensive line maybe being a position that this recruiting class could, could you know, be improved by with an addition. What are some position groups or even some individuals that you feel like when you look at this recruiting class could be the quickest to make an impact? Any guys that you see playing right away as true freshmen, a la Justice Hill from this last season? Yeah, what's, what's sort of fascinating about that is, you know, in terms of the guys that they think will probably make an immediate impact, um, they come at position groups where the Cowboys are pretty set, uh, you know, but so we'll, it's really interesting to see how it plays out through fall camp, whether these young guys can make enough of an impression, you know, kind of a la James Washington, a couple of years at receiver, uh, you know, kind of becoming an instant star. Uh, the Cowboys have a couple of those guys with that potential. The first being Tylen Wallace, you know, he's the brother of Trace and Wallace, uh, the exact twins from Fort Worth South Hills. Uh, he's a, one of the highest received receivers that the highest rated receivers the Cowboys have had. Uh, dating back all the way to Des Bryant, um, a player who's got length and athleticism, 
um, who, if he isn't necessarily a starter next year with how deep OSU is at receiver, uh, he should be a guy that can see, should see the field. And if he develops a rapport with Mason Rudolph and becomes, you know, a, a reliable target, uh, then we could be looking at a potential Justice Hill situation. Um, a lot to play out there. Uh, but also the, the second guy who could also play as, as soon as that first game uh, is a running back, you know, kind of in that mold of Justice Hill. Uh, the Cowboys selected a, a guy with world-class speed and Shuba Hubbard uh, from up in Alberta, Canada. Um, you know, it's sort of yet to be seen whether or not uh, the play of Canadian football will translate immediately uh, in terms of the competition that he faced up in Canada. What he's going to face in the States is going to be much tougher. Uh, so you wonder if, if there's going to be a little bit of, you know, a growing pains uh, when it comes to that. Uh, but when you got a guy with that type of speed who's been a physical runner as well uh, with a big frame, uh, you know, I think they're going to try to find ways uh, to use him in tandem with uh, Justice Hill considering the departure of Chris Carson after this past season. You know, you mentioned Hubbard, uh, Kyle. He's a, a trackster, a guy that uh, is expected to at least think about running track at Oklahoma State. And that was actually the, the idea of these guys within this recruiting class for Oklahoma State playing other sports, doing other uh, things besides just football was something we heard in a variety of ways from Mike Gundy. It seems like that's something that when Oklahoma State's out on the recruiting trail, obviously they want great football players, but it sounds like th that is really something when they're out evaluating these guys that they like to see uh, these guys that they're going to sign on signing day be multi-sport athletes and not, not do the, uh, the one sport like we hear uh, so many times that that uh, that specialization that's out there. What what's the what's that trend for you in your mind? Is Oklahoma State different than other people, or is this something that they value uh, maybe a little differently than some other schools? Oh, I think it's just sort of a reflection of where they're putting their most recruiting efforts. Because there's going to be the the five star kids and the four star kids and the the Dallas Metroplex areas where the Cowboys have had success recruiting before where they're going to offer those kids, they're going to pursue them. Um, but with the understanding that when you got, you know, Alabama's and Florida State's and, and you know, national programs, story programs from across the country getting in on their recruitment, you know, the, uh, like OSU, uh, OSU coach Mike Gundy said, you know, back in December, uh, they felt like they were at the bar and the, the lights were coming on and they were going home alone after spending all this time uh, trying to basically court these recruits. Uh, so when you look at all these multi-sport, multi-position guys on the roster, uh, it's a reflection of where the Cowboys are, are, are emphasizing. They want to go out and get the best players on the field, uh, guys who are sort of natural leaders because they have to play so many different positions or sports, um, you know, time management. They sort of come in, I think, a little more chiseled uh, mentally than maybe some of these other guys who are only playing one sport and recruited in one area. Um, and they're the, typically those three-star athletes that the Cowboys have, have really built this program on, and, and some of their best players uh, started in that mold. So, uh, you know, they, they love to really rely on Rob Glass and, and how his ability to develop players. So uh, when you guys who come in uh, to the program have so many intangibles like that, uh, they really like their ability to, to turn them into the athletes uh, that they project to become. Hey, lastly, Kyle, tell us where you are today. Uh, we, we've been talking about Mike Gundy's press conference, but – because I'm here in the studio, and you're actually not in Stillwater either. Where are you today? Who are you going to see? Um, right now, I'm in Oolaga, uh to see Brock Martin, uh, the defensive uh, end for the Cowboys who committed. Uh, later, I'll be going to Bixby uh, to see Brendan Evers, who's a defensive tackle commit. Uh, so I had to do a little bit of driving this morning, uh, but uh, you know it'll be nice to sort of see these kids and, and to kind of see just the emotion of this day because – uh, you know, when they look back on, on their football careers and just their life in general, uh, you know, this is going to be a, a time that they'll always remember, you know, kind of making it official, uh, having someone else uh, pay for your college to play uh, a college sport. Uh, it's, a, it's a pretty exciting time for anybody. Definitely so. We've got reporters like Kyle spread out all over the metro, all over the state. We'll have that coverage throughout the day at NewsOK.com and tomorrow in the Oklahoma. But we'll continue to have online coverage today. We've got a rolling online chat going right now with some of our writers. So get in there, ask your questions. They'll answer uh, when it's their time to, to get on the chat. We'll continue to also have live video. Our 1130 time slot will have high school uh, sports writer Scott Wright talking about some of the in-state recruits. So we'll have wall-to-wall -wall coverage continuing as signing day does as well. Be sure to stay with the best coverage team anywhere at newsok.com and every day in the Oklahoman.